we should be, uh, I broke it down the way I would like to have it done. Uh, and I, when I'm talking about Oregon, I don't care about the state or uh, I don't care what River Edge does, only when we look at the numbers because they're in the district line. But I think we should be at 10 to 15 percent, and we should be at 55 percent of the meeting, and at least 30 percent of the exceeding. That's just the first year. And I think that number should be higher every year after, heading towards we might not be able to get to zero, but we should be able to get as close to zero as we could. That's whatever assessment we use, whatever name they call it, um, that's the way I think we should be heading for. As far as the numbers, I mean, I'm looking at the not yet, the what it called, and then to look at graphs. At one point, you said we were number two out of uh, 21 fifth grades. Page seven. I don't remember us ever being that high. Last year. Last year? Correct. In just the fifth grade. In just the. This was mad. Well, that was four, number four, and then I was number two. Well, I got page 10, number two. Um, but anyway, I was told that was number two. I would have felt a little better, but that's just one grade. Um, we've had Park for four years, and I don't think we've, we've done that well. But um, now looking at numbers, percentages versus graphs, it's a whole different what do you call it? Although the graphs probably could not better. No, this is actually the same exact data presentation I've done for the past two years. So the data is actually being presented the exact same way. Mrs. Robertson, you uh, I was just going to say that one of the reasons that we may have um, dropped sixth grade in theory is that a lot of the districts we're comparing ourselves to sixth grade is middle school and, and I know we try to mm -hmm. emulate and act like a middle school but the fact is we're not so I know that may be part of the difference um, and I am totally opposed to changing it but it may be part of the difference just putting it out there and unfortunately, you know, like I could share things that are qualitative in nature about what happens when you have a school and students are together for seven years and what happens emotionally and behaviorally that also impacts academic performance by sixth grade. It's fascinating to me that the students that leave fifth grade are very different from the students that are in January of sixth grade. In a way, they're ready for something right. new and different. I mean, there are other reasons why, Absolutely. you know, that need to be re resolved with River Edge and so on, but, you know, ideally that could be part of the difference as well. And that's, I think, what my point is, that there are a gazillion variables. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, unlike true science, where I can isolate every variable except the one I want to test, I will never be able to do that. So all this administrative team can do is continue to create theories and try to build the story of the data and see if the data changes as a result, which is what we continue to do. I can look at that data, and there's one year, there's a very big dip in fourth grade, and when I read this data with the staff, I said to them, what do you remember about that year? It was the year right before we adopted GoMath, and part of the reason we adopted GoMath was we felt everyday math's prior version was not getting the work done. Well, we see it in that data. Oh, right there. So it's about looking at it 
identifying the trends, identifying the anomalies, trying to create the story, creating the theory, testing it. And again, you know, there's no guarantees. We just keep trying to do better. Of course, and I, I don't know if anybody else has any other questions, but I'd just like to thank you and your team for putting all this data together, looking at it, trying to come up with the theories that you think will make a difference, and uh, I appreciate that. I'm sure the entire board does, and the entire district should, <laughs> those that know about it. So, thank you. Yeah, I'd like to jump in here for a second. I missed most of the presentation, but I had an opportunity to review the charts in advance of the meeting. Um, I see the numbers, and you know, would I like to see us one out of 21, or what? You know, one out of 30. Of course, I would. Um, but I see this a little bit differently. I'm not disappointed. I know that. We as taxpayers, as citizens, want our school to be the best. But this is one school. We have two districts in this town. And people move in here for both districts. Um, so this isn't the end all be all of your child's education here. Um, and, you know, I want everybody to be, to be a one in every category, but I also see what's happening in this building. And, um, you know, I've been impressed with a lot of teachers in this building, and I've been impressed with a lot of the lessons and the kind of things that they're learning. And so I'm not disappointed, and I don't want for a second to, you know, I, I appreciate that we're reviewing, evaluating, how can we do better? We always have to do that. How can we do better for the kids? But, um, but I think the teaching staff is doing a great job and you know they're a sharp and it's a lot of work and i wanted to thank everybody for all they put into the meetings i really do i think it's important and i think it's also important to remember that you know we're talking about really little kids who are taking this test and you know one of the things i was thinking about as these kids were preparing to go on this three-day trip is you know uh, you're going to have kids who still look that, right? Because up until age 12, it's considered normal. Doctors don't care. So you talk about kids with all different kinds of things. They're still really little. And for them, this is a few days. And you don't know if they've been crying, vomiting, not sleeping, and many of them have anxiety. And, you know, it's a snapshot of one bit of what they're doing for the entirety, I, I, I don't know. So while I understand we're really focused on data, we have to remember that all of these are little kids and they don't walk around with two or three or four stamped on their foreheads. We still have to educate them and even for the kid who is getting a five, we still need to educate them too and make sure that they're challenged. I can't sit here in this district and say I have to bring up only the ones and twos. We have to raise all of these kids because when they do get to the high school, they are prepared on, many, you know, they are challenged on many different levels. You have a wide variety of learners. We have to reach all of these learners, not just the struggling ones. I think there was one more thing that I wanted to say. Little kids, they'll come to me. There was one more thing I wanted to say. Well, um, there's a question that you can think about. Okay, thank you. Dr. Ansel, just um, as far as data goes. We have Bergen I, we have Ordo All students, we have um, Ordo Gen Ed. Is there Bergen I Gen Ed broken out since we have it for, do we have that anywhere? Sure. Just out of curiosity. Would we'll be able to see that maybe? Sure. Not if it's not, I don't want to add work to anyone, but if we have it, I would just like to see it. If you don't, that's fine. And then um, I'm assuming since we have these districts all laid out, we would have them somewhere. Um, for example, because you know we were saying like the difference could be the one student. Would we have them laid out on the spreadsheet somewhere? Is that how we got to this? Assuming. Um, I actually do have. Are you asking for all students or for special education well, students? Two separate things. This this schedule mm -hmm. is 
you know, we have Bergen I everyone, mm -hmm. Orville everyone, and we have Orville Jen. Do we have Bergen I Jen and Ruben I or no? I actually don't think the state doesn't do that. Okay, they don't Bergen. Actually, where we got our general education statistic was not from a state report. It was from Lincoln who did it for us. Okay, so so we don't actually okay. have that data. But if you're asking about do we have the data broken out for total students so like or special education students, I um, actually don't even have special education students. I have total students broken out in a spreadsheet in ranked order. That would be this. That would be this. So do you have that? Yes. It's up to Dr. Manson. Actually, see, like it's, it's you know, how close people are actually to the top, to the bottom, and it shows you the perspective of where you're at. Okay. Do you think it really was? Yeah. You went back to data. I'm back off data. And I, like, you know, we're not setting policy based on anecdotal stories, but I still have to, you know, we're talking about little kids taking tests for the first time. And, and with math especially, math is not what it was when we grew up. You know, two plus two is four, and it wasn't explained why. There's a lot of reading in the math. And I'll never forget, when my son was in second grade, kids were, needed the test to be read to them because they couldn't read it. So how are you going to do the math if you can't read the word problem, right? It's different. Um, having said that, okay, so we're challenging, challenging them ways that we weren't challenged when we were little. But I, I reached out to some people and I said, what do you think of the test scores? Right? Because I was kind of curious. What about them? I know what I think. I said, these parents said to me, I really don't care about the test. I already knew from the teacher and what's happening in the class how my child was doing. So that's like a what I, you know, right? You know, you know, if your kid is a, is a five, you already know. You don't need that test to tell you. If your kid is, and, and I had another friend who said she wasn't quite sure where her kid ended up, so she was kind of curious where he would end up, because she's not quite sure. But it had nothing to do with, is my teacher, you know, doing the lesson the right way, or is this not the right school for me? You know, parents look at it differently. They look at their individual kids. I know. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Walker. Just a quick, um, to Ms. Bozio's point, uh, and back a little bit to data. If I look back on my time here on the board, I believe when I came on in 2011, language arts was struggling. That was our, our problematic area. And, um, when Ms. Bozios came on, she introduced new curriculum, new, um, uh, I guess, uh, the, uh, the Columbia uh, Teachers, College. Teachers College, the whole thing. And now we've reached that pinnacle, what, six years later, so of where language arts is higher than math. So if we look at what we did starting with GOMAN, which I still think is, is an excellent program, and when we wrap our arms around it, and we need to give our teachers that PD. They have so much to digest. They need that help. So um, I think, and that's also uh, to Ms. Hawley's credit also, she, um, she's been doing a great amount in some of my reading. I've seen her go into the classroom. So she's turnkey and teaching, and not only here, but someplace else. Ms. Hawley, you also. Um, I'm not going to put you on the spot and embarrass you, but um, in other districts, she's going to uh, be the math consultant. So I think we have to give ourselves time um, and, and let it all digest. And I think one of the greatest things here is how great the kids are. And it's not only the test scores, it's not the test scores, but it's who that person is. And you can walk down the hall at any time here and you'll get a, excuse me, or a hello, or a smile, and um, they're becoming good individuals, and that doesn't happen. We can teach them to the test, but we're teaching them how to be good people. So that comes from our staff and our administration. So thank you for that. And one more thing, just 
speaking of teaching to the test, like that's the last thing that I would want to see in the district. If it meant going up like a spot or two, like there's no, I, I it would be devastating to me if we did like a drill and kill and just, you know, doing test prep. And my daughter had that at one point at Riverdale, and it was, I, I think it was a real shame um, because there's so much more to language arts than teaching to the park. So, uh, I'm glad that we don't do that. You can do some familiarity because, you know, multiple choice for comprehension, comprehension, that's life. Um, but we can't focus on just teaching to the test. I don't want to be that district. Yeah. One thing that I noticed on here was um, how well we did um, with uh, students with disabilities um, passing. Um, looks like we were beating the state, we were beating the Virgin Island in all categories except for one. Is there anything you would take from that, Dr. Ansel, or some story in that that we should be considering? Um, well, this, I think I would echo what Ms. Bosio said about general education students. It's the same process of looking through the data and trying to parse out some possible explanations for it. Um, I don't know if there's one answer to that here. Special uh, needs students have such very needs. Um, and I think that overall, uh, what I've observed is that our um, teachers in special ed um, are doing an outstanding job. So I don't think there's real deficiencies that I'd be concerned about. I think it has to do uh, sometimes may or may not be the answer, but sometimes it's just a matter of uh, how well are we implementing accommodations for students. So there's a lot of different possibles that we're certainly talking about and looking at. Any questions? Good. Just going to open up to the public if anyone had any questions on the test presentation. very much for that presentation. Yeah. All right, so um, next we had a uh, discussion, um, sort of the wrap up on strategic planning, and we invited our rep from school boards, uh, Mr. Matt Lee, to come and assist us with that. So welcome, Mr. Lee.
How's everyone? So, um, I'm here today to deliver what I'm tempted to call the final report for the strategic planning. But as we talked about many times during the strategic planning process, this is really a living, breathing document, right? So I'm getting you started with uh, the results of the input sessions we had and um, some of the work that you did as a board together to complete the original piece. And I'm turning that work over to you for your administration to then take to the next level, which is the action plan level. And that is where priorities identified in our strategic planning program get uh, executed. So I'm just going to walk through the process that we used very quickly um, with thanks, first of all, to the Board of Del community and to the Board of Education for all of their fine contributions to the process that we undertook. Uh, as we mentioned in the beginning of the process, certainly our administration could have pulled together a strategic plan on their own, but it probably would have worked very different than what we got through the community input that we took in. And I, I commend you all for involving the community in this because I've obviously we're all in this process together and it makes every bit of sense in the world to get the community's um, uh, ideas and input about where they want the school district to go. <clears throat> so even though we had planned for four meetings, we ended up with three meetings uh, due to what can only be described as some crazy weather over the last few years. So we did lose one of our meetings, but we didn't lose any of the um, effect and benefit that we had from meeting together as a group. Our first meeting took place on April the 12th, and at that meeting, we talked about the strengths and challenges of the district. We also talked about the visions about where we wanted to go. At meeting two, we ended up talking about specific goal statements and objectives underneath those goal statements. And uh, excuse me, meeting three was all about our mission statement. So we're going to talk a little bit about each of these meetings as we move forward with the presentation. As we said at the beginning of every uh, meeting that we had, we start with our mission statement. And that always is the foundation for all the things that we try to accomplish in our district. It's where we state what it is we're about and what we're trying to accomplish. As I mentioned before, meeting one were the strengths and challenges. And you can see I recap some of the strengths identified and some of the challenges identified. And I know you'll recognize some of these concepts and you'll see a little bit later on how they played into the final plan. The second part of meeting one was where we talked about vision. And we asked the public, people who participated in the meeting, to think about having been away from the district for five years and coming back and seeing on Time Magazine that the Oriel School District was a 21st century success. And what are the things that we um, would envision had happened in those five years in order to create the 21st century success that the district had become? And here are some of the visions that we talked about and were identified by our groups. So you can see at the beginning, balancing technology, create critical thinkers, cultivating good citizens, social awareness and responsibility, high achievement, developing grit, flexible evolving curriculum, addressing the four C's, critical thinking, communication, collaboration, and creation. So those are some of the things we talked about. And then we identified common threads, and the common threads that we uh, pulled together are really the uh, precursor to us identifying the goal areas that we wanted to work on. So you can see some of these themes that we found, collaboration, problem solving, academic achievement, digital literacy responsibility, critical thinking, facilities and funding. So from that, we developed our four goal areas. And they turned out to be academic achievement for all students, 21st century skills-based development. And by the way, you all get booklets with this recap, so um, keep 
Keep that in mind if you're taking your notes. Uh, number three was developing the whole child. So we took in the themes of citizenship, social and emotional learning, and wellness. And then finally, facilities and finance. So among all those um, areas we identified, what we tried to do was to come down to a condensed goal statement that identify what it is in that area that we wanted to achieve. So you'll see for each of these, we have identified those goal areas and also the objectives that the groups created in order to help uh, create uh, areas of focus for each of those goal areas. So you can see in academic achievement, our goal was to consistently utilize the best pedagogical practices to ensure that all students reach their individual academic potential. And then, of course, the objectives that go along with that. 21st century skills-based development. The goal was to equip and empower individual learners with the mindsets, habits, and skills necessary for success in the 21st century. And as you read each of these, you can notice a lot of the common words are being weaved into each of these areas. Developing a whole child, citizenship, social and emotional learning, wellness, to create a community-wide focus on developing social and emotional learning skills, increasing character education, and increasing responsible uses of technology. And the fourth goal around facilities and finance, maintain fiscal responsibility by allocating resources and managing facilities to meet the needs of all stakeholders. So now that we've identified our goal, area, goal areas and uh, worked out the objectives that we want to see under each of those goal areas, the next step, as we mentioned before, is developing action plans. And the action plans are where we get down to real specific things related to each of these goal areas. So, what are the staff resources that we need? What kind of professional development might be warranted? What are our timelines? What are the things that we're going to use to measure our success against each of these areas? That is the uh, work of the administration as they move forward to put this plan into action. So, meeting three. This was about our district mission statement. And one of the objectives here was, of course, to review the uh, statement that was currently in place, which we did. We broke it into groups. We talked about what are the things that um, typically make up a mission statement. So in the example that was supplied to the group at the time, we talked about the things that are normally present, like who we are. And our example, as you see up here from the, from the night that we went over this exercise, might be a caring community of teachers and learners. And then the next piece of our mission statement is typically, what are we doing? What's our mission for us? What is our job? What are we trying to achieve? So imparting 21st century skills to inspire life, lifelong mode of learning. That's another example. And then finally, what are you working toward? And the goal here is to prepare students to be a creative and productive contributor to the community. So that was the example that we started. And then finally, we took a look at the key elements of our current mission statement. So, Using that, that previous slide as a guide, we looked about we looked at the things like who we are. So we are a safe and nurturing learning community. Right? That's in our current statement. Our objective is to pursue ex educational excellence, inspire lifelong learning. And the last piece is in order to achieve a school environment designed to maximize, maximize student attention, develop responsible citizens, etc. So that's how we kind of broke down the current mission statement against what we, what we uh, provided as a framework to consider for change. So what we ended up with after breaking up into groups and having each group attack each piece of that uh, potential new mission statement was this. And this has been recapped in our um, reports and is still being worked on by the board, to my knowledge. So this is what we proposed in that meeting. The Oradell Public School District is an engaged and nurturing community committed to providing innovative opportunities for social, emotional, and academic discovery to foster curiosity, courage, and character. 
We prepare our students to be lifelong learners who are self-directed, resilient, risk-taking global citizens. So, that was the result of our meeting number three. What I have for you tonight that the administrators will work with. And these are booklets for the board. So in there, there are copies, um, more than enough copies for the current board. There are copies for the administrators to keep on track. <coughs> Um, certainly administrators can, can get a copy as well, and perhaps any of the board members you may have would like a copy of that as they come on board, given that this is a five-year plan. Um, so this is the conclusion of our involvement in this process. Uh, I am certainly available as an individual and as your school board rep to answer questions about this report going forward or if you have questions about action planning or how this may relate to your future annual planning, happy to answer those questions as well. Um, I, you know, I think that for me personally and for my colleagues who work on this pro uh, process, um, I thought it was very well done. I thought we had enthusiastic support from the administration and from the board. And uh, again, I think um, you all are deserving of congratulations for bringing the community in and working together to create a roadmap for all the other folks who work. So, thank you.